Doctors called her crazy for the last 20 years for suggesting that the weather might impact her blood sugars. And on a recent coaching call, myself and one of my type one diabetic clients, we discovered this breakthrough understanding of how something that you may not have even heard of before has ultimately landed her in the hospital more than once. And after discovering this, she's been able to lower her standard deviation from 67 to 35, and it's getting better every single day, improve overall control, predictability, and stability of blood sugars, and to finally have the peace of mind and certainty behind her blood sugar calculations, meal times, exercise and activity, and the likes. If you don't know who I am, my name is Matt Vandevecht. I'm a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist. I live with type 1 diabetes as well, and I love geeking out on these topics with my clients and with you. I hope you find this one useful today and learn some new strategies of what might have been causing some of your more mysterious blood sugar spikes and drops and ideally, you'll be able to pull some lessons from this to help stabilize your own blood sugars after learning about this mysterious variable that doctors still don't even know much about. So let's dive into our theme song and then get straight into the interview. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. Well, Colleen, I'm excited to have you here and uh, sharing what should be a really interesting topic for anybody else living with type 1, because uh, we've discovered over the years it's not just insulin to carb ratios or basal rates. There's a lot more to managing blood sugars. Before we get into the, I mean, just the, the fascinating topics that we're going to cover today, I'd love for anybody listening or watching to know a little bit of your background. So uh, maybe give us like a a quick summary of how long you've had diabetes, what you're using, that sort of thing. So I was diagnosed with diabetes in 1975. Um, I turned two years old. My mom had taken me to my two-year-old visit. I got my vaccines and then within a week or two developed severe fevers, had a regular virus, but mom noticed that something was wrong. So when she took me to the physician, they immediately diagnosed me as a type 1 diabetic, and I spent several days in the hospital. And in the 70s, anybody that's had diabetes this long, you know that there was not a lot um, to help take care of the disease. So my mom stayed home with me and took care of me and learned a lot about, you know, nutrition and exercise and, you know, just did the best with what they had. So I've been a diabetic. It will be 48 years in September. Wow. And <laughs> so the whole time I've been a diabetic, I am have only had one real complication of diabetes. I'm legally blind because of retinopathy. And my retinopathy developed because of my first pregnancy. So mm. hormones went out of control. And once they started, they just would not stop. So... It's in remission now, but I lost a lot of the vision due to that treatment. And I've been MDI my whole life because I cannot see to use tiny displays that they have. So I am, I'm still MDI. I have been 48 years. We once did the calculation a few years ago and I've estimated I've taken at least 85,000 shots in my lifetime. So wow. a lot of shots. Yeah. That is a lot. Holy cow. Yeah. So those what? absorption rates, they, they suddenly <laughs> make sense. A lot of scar tissue. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's changing for all of us as we're learning about changing our, our locations for injection. And I'm like, oh, I was never told that for a long time. You inject yeah. them to the exact same spot every single day. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I mean, a long time. You've seen a lot of the progress of the devices. Like you said, pumps, yes. not really an option because... Uh, they're in a battle to make things smaller and smaller and smaller and more and compact. Then bigger and, and like, bigger and bigger. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I know we talked a little bit about this previously, but just the complexity of diabetes and what goes into it. And um, as we become more aware of the factors that influence blood sugars, I know that you've got quite the story of 
what used to be an invisible factor. People just didn't even consider it as an option. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So I had really wonderful parents that kept incredible records throughout my lifetime growing up. And one of the things that they noticed and they told me to be aware of is the severe changes um, in how much insulin I took um, in spring and fall. And they said, as soon as the weather started changing, my insulin needs stopped changing. And when they told me that, they didn't really know why. They just said, just we've kept track of it. And, and they had almost two decades worth of records. <laughs> so they had um, noticed from year to year that um, they would have to change my insulin dosage. So as an adult, I was always aware of that. And I started noticing when I was completely on my own, taking care of my diabetes myself, that whenever severe weather, severe storms would occur, my blood sugars would be uncontrollable and I would have really severe lows. And I've been hospitalized many times because of this. Um, the most severe was 20 years ago. It was February and I live in Southern Ohio. So we get all, we get all the seasons and we get all the weather. <laughs> um, and in that February, um, I had, um, I'd been at home, you know, my kids were here. It was an easy, lazy day, but there was a severe snowstorm. It wasn't rain or thunder. It was a severe snowstorm, but a cold front had moved in. And um, after lunch that day, I started developing a migraine. And I noticed that, you know, I took some Tylenol and it just would not go away. And I took my blood pressure. My blood pressure was up and I was thinking, this is crazy. I literally have nothing, no stress today. <laughs> um, and my blood sugar started falling and it fell until um, I had to, to take something for it and started drinking orange juice. And that orange juice didn't even phase it. Mm -hmm. I ended up drinking almost 16 ounces of orange juice. And um, I don't remember much because I started becoming very ill. And um, the next thing I knew I was um, waking up in the hospital. So that's happened on more than one occasion. That's the only time it's ever happened during the daytime. And I told them that I think it's the weather. <laughs> I was the crazy lady that said the weather's trying to kill me. <laughs> anytime the weather severely changed, um, if there's a severe thunderstorm or a huge cold front that moves in, my blood sugar just, it bottoms out. And I've just known to just watch for that. And I tend to panic eat whenever a storm comes, which is probably not good either, but um, I've kept up with it and, and read about it through the years. And they're finally, finally, after telling me for almost 30 years that I was, there was no science behind it, that there's some science behind it now. And they can actually show that that's a variable that you do have to take into consideration. Some people are more prone than others. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm definitely one of those that has a, a significant response to um, what is specifically happens is the barometric pressure drops. And two things on that. So one, just to add context for anybody else who might not know this, you said 16 ounces of juice, which depending on the juice, I believe is around 60 grams of carbs. Is that right? Yeah, it was 72 grams of carbs. 72. It was, yeah, it was 36 times two. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a lot of sugar for it not to phase it and still. <laughs> yeah. Whew. And they had given me the the shot when the EMTs got here. Mm -hmm. um, and I came to consciousness for just a, a few split seconds. But as soon as I did, I started vomiting uncontrollably. Mm -hmm. And then I went back under again. I fell back into unconsciousness. Wow. Now the funny, the funny part is about this story is, you know, I end on the There's song. The funny like part. Oh. <laughs> is, um, it was a terrible snowstorm. So the, you know, an ambulance in the snow, right. And I'm unconscious. So to keep me warm, because my blood sugar had dropped so low, I was in shock and I mm. was freezing. I, um, they described it as I was uncontrollably shaking. And so the EMTs covered my entire body, including my head with the, sh with the sheet and the blanket. Mm -hmm. So 
some neighbors had been peeking out their windows and saw oh, them taking geez. carrying me out with it. And my son, my son was a teenager at the time. He got some condolences that he didn't quite know what was oh, what was that about. But goodness. the whole neighborhood thought that I'd passed away that day because the EMTs were trying to keep me warm. Wow. So I even got flowers. Yeah. Got flowers. <laughs> condolence oh, flowers. That is wild. Well, I'm glad they at least had the the forethought to bring blankets, you know, in a snowstorm to keep you warm. Yeah. My oh, goodness. Because, yeah, I've certainly had those urgent lows where you're freezing, but you're also yeah. sweating. It's weird. Yes. <laughs> you're soaking wet and you feel like. So, yeah, and I remember actually a couple of weeks ago and for everybody watching, Colleen uh, is working with us right now. So that's why I'm very familiar with her story. A couple of weeks ago, we had had that light bulb moment together where it was like, wait a second, barometric yeah. pressure, that yeah. might be it. And obviously before jumping into the program with us, we didn't know it was that, you know, we had no, no idea. On our I just knew it was app. weather. <laughs> yeah. We're just like blood sugars aren't cooperating. Let's see if we can fix it. Um, I'm curious, what made you want to work with us before we even knew what the problem was? I honestly, I wanted to work with you because <clears throat> I've been a diabetic for decades and I still can't figure out all the variables and all the things that cause these erratic or seemingly erratic, but there's always an answer. Um, and I've searched forever to find somebody that was actually trying to find the causes and mm. then fix the root of the problems instead of just saying, oh, that's just, you know, it's just because you're a diabetic. And so I actually sat through last year, your weekend long, and you had a bunch of guests come on and they were all people that were type 1 diabetics that worked with type 1 diabetics, which I thought was fantastic because the whole time that I sat through all of those hour long sessions, I was thinking, these are my people. Yeah. I found my tribe <laughs> and uh, I I had to get through some nutritional training. Um, and then the, once I, I learned some other things that were going on, because I have more than just diabetes, then I was ready to jump on board and, and tackle getting my blood sugars in control. And it's been great. You, you found somebody who's willing to geek out on the science as much as you are. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds yeah. like, I love it. And yes, you found your people. I love chatting this stuff with you guys. And I mean, transparently, once we were like, wait a second, barometric pressure, I dove yeah. into research mode because I'm just a very curious person. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about that. For anybody who doesn't, okay. I'm going to let you take the lead here. What is barometric pressure? So yeah, the weather part, my brain said, we don't need to be weatherman. We just need to know what it does and what <laughs> we need to pay attention to. So when, what I really focus on um, is the articles that touched on barometric pressure changes and the direct link between um, blood sugars and when blood pressure and blood, different things in your body change based on barometric pressure changes. Mm -hmm. And the first article I latched onto was about migraines because I thought I've spent 20 years wondering what happened that day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, you know, it's one of those mysteries. I thought, because you can calculate 72 carbs, where where did it go? What was going on? And I've always wondered what happened that day. And so the first article I read was on a migraine health website. But when I, I searched it, it was talking about blood sugar and barometric pressure. And it's talking about how your blood pressure actually increases when barometric pressure decreases and the viscosity changes the oxygen levels they change and your brain tells your blood vessels you know <laughs> basically needs more oxygen so your whole body changes and blood sugar is affected by that change and so my body and and I know because I feel it when it's happening it it slows down and and so I'll have energy and carbs in me, but it's just not been delivered. Mm. And so that causes any insulin I have on board to be acting without the blood sugars getting to, to the cells to, you know, to level it out and stabilize it. And so the more severe the drop, the more severe my reaction is to it. And if I have 
Humalog on board because I take Atlantis and Humalog. If I have Humalog on board, it's traumatic what it does. To say the and, least. <laughs> yeah. So in in knowing that that day I had a migraine, you know, the the you know, going back years, decades ago, it started with a migraine. Well, the migraine was caused by the same thing that affects the blood sugar drop. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, your body and your, your brain changing your blood delivery. So both were going on. I just noticed the migraine first and then Mm -hmm. the blood sugar issue happened. Now, quick question before I dive into the other side of it, is the migraine a reliable warning sign? If you were to use it as such, it's only reliable if you respond that way. Some people, um, not everyone responds because not everybody's body is built the same way. Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot of people that, well, there are certain, a lot of conditions that respond to barometric pressure changes, people that Mm -hmm. have any inflammation in their bodies. Yeah. Um, migraine and migraine is a double whammy because if you get migraines, due to severe low blood sugar drops, mm. which happens, um, then <laughs> the barometric pressure change is causing both of those things. In the the migraine, the headache is happening, is a double whammy because your blood double sugar drops too. Well, and you touched on something I think is critical for everyone listening to understand, which is everyone responds differently, right? So some people like you see a big impact. Other people might see nothing or, or very little, you know, not enough to notice. And and this is such a great piece too, because people ask me about our program. Well, what do you, what do you do for me? I'm like, I don't know. It's different for everybody. <laughs> you know, I've never walked through barometric pressure with another client before. That's just a piece of knowledge that's been sitting back there waiting for Colleen. <laughs> so uh, yeah. the whole, even diabetes is just such a different beast for every person. It has to be an individualized plan. Yeah. With yours, um, and looking at barometric pressure as one of these um, variables, you know, that we're tracking now. And obviously, I also dug in a little bit, wanted to do some research. So uh, barometric pressure itself is actually a measurement of the weight exerted by the air molecules. And when I was looking into it, I was like, okay, well, what causes the changes? You know, we're not just measuring because that's reactive. I want to know how we can predict this stuff because that's what I do. So I was talking to Colleen. And I was like, okay, well, I read this thing, honestly, like 15 years ago, because I was curious what makes wind, right? I'm just a very curious person. <laughs> and I came across okay. this, this great summary, I'm going to read off. The change in pressure is caused by changes in air density, and air density is related to temperature. Warm air is less dense than cooler air because the gas molecules in warm air have a greater velocity and are farther apart than in cooler air. Uh, a great example, the one that I came across like 15 years ago that creates wind and changes in air temperature is the sun heats up things on the Earth's surface. So we use a rock as an example. And when the rock gets heated up, the air surrounding the rock is now heated up by default because it's, it's near. And that air, because it is now warmer, rises. The cooler air drops to replace it, and that creates a cycle, which is essentially wind. Uh, at larger scales, of course, <laughs> it's it's this fascinating topic that you really could get lost in. I don't know everything about it. I will be the first to admit that. But this uh, certainly reinvigorated my curiosity when you had reached out about this, Colleen, about barometric pressure and all that. So uh, the next question then that I want to know more about is what have or what steps have you taken to be more proactive? Like what can somebody who notices whether it impacts their blood sugars, what can they do? So I've always paid attention and I know um, when severe weather comes, because that means there's severe means there's a, going to be a dramatic pressure change. Mm-hmm. That's what causes the severity of the weather. Um, and since we like specifically talked about barometric pressure, um, I just started daily keeping track of the barometric pressure where it should be, but the arrow and the, the weather apps, there's two, one on my phone, one on the computer that I use, show that it's going to fall. So um, I said, okay, it's going to fall. And then I see that it's supposed to be sunny today. But when I scroll through the hour by hour, I'm like, oh, we're having we're having rain at five o'clock. And then you keep scrolling. Like, oh, there's a thunderstorm this evening. So I just kind of think to myself, okay, I need to start decreasing my insulin. Um, 
just gradually and then make sure that I really pay attention to my blood sugars after dinner mm -hmm. and, you know, make sure that I can, I can always add a little bit more insulin if I need to, but I can't take it away. <laughs> Yep. So, you know, I eat normally around six o'clock in the evening. Well, we're going to get rain at five and then, you know, thunderstorm later that evening. So I'm just going to watch and see how it goes. And I've been keeping track how I respond to the different changes. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and it's significant. So if it, if there's a severe thunderstorm, we had a day where we had four thunderstorms hail storms, oh, severe goodness. lightning. My blood sugar looked like this. It looked like the heart monitor because I dropped <laughs> oh, down no. into like the forties, like four times that day. Oh. Um, and I just, after the second time, I just stopped taking any humor. I just stopped taking insulin. I just ate and I still dropped twice with just my wow. lantus, just my basil. Um, but as soon as the, the weather cleared up and stabilized and the pressure came back up, I actually went a little bit high because I, I hadn't been dosing because I had to ride those storms. Right. So, yeah. I don't know if you've heard the Metallica song, Ride the Lightning, but it kind of sounds yes. like <laughs> you're riding the lightning. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, and I mean, honestly, my, I, my brain goes into fix it mode, right? I'm like, okay, what can we do to fix this? First thought is you need to move. <laughs> Come to San Diego. It's way easier. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. But no, of course, other strategies, like you said, adjusting the dose. So I wonder if there is a calculation of what's the bolus reduction ratio so that it stays even or even basal ratio change if there is a Lantus need. Um, you know, looking at the types of foods, it could be a, a carb cycling strategy, which I know we talked about, where right. on stormy days, we just shift into a slightly different macronutrient profile, you know, different food choices. For anybody who doesn't know what that means, uh, you know, higher fiber, higher Lots protein, more, you know, <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. So, I uh, really, I mean, I love this because we had been talking initially about uh, misattribution. We thought that nighttime produced the lows. We just didn't know what the trigger was because they were so infrequent. And it was like, okay, you you go low, but it only happens at night, except for that one time twenty years ago. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, what what could this be? And I was racking my brain, and then of course we isolated the storms and barometric pressure. Uh, yeah. I think that nighttime produces the biggest threat because it's so hard to catch things when we're asleep. Yes. There is no early warning, you know, it's an alarm and then it's too late. Oh shoot, exactly. I'm low. Uh, and so making proactive adjustments as you have to dinner to, you know, always add insulin afterwards. I can't take it back once I have injected it. I love this proactive approach that you've already implemented. Um, I mean, as far as, because I know that we've been going through this together, but you've also been doing your own research as well alongside the program. Outside of barometric pressure, was there anything else that you have been working on that you've seen progress with? The main progress is, well, I think we talked about this before, but I'll go through it, is I identify exercise as actual exercise, like jumping jacks, you know, running, and I live a very active lifestyle. I get up and I go all day long and I don't consider vacuuming exercise. I don't consider carrying loads of laundry up the steps exercise. Um, you know, I don't drive. So I'll walk to the store and back. And I don't consider that exercise when technically all of that is exercise. And so I've had to just kind of change the way I look at activity and realize that everything you do that your body moves is a form of exercise, either anaerobic or aerobic. And so I've really started paying attention and keeping track of how I respond and what all of those different activities do to my blood sugar levels, because it that's made a huge change um, because I, I have a Dexcom. And when I, when I'm looking at my Dexcom, just to, to see, um, how I've been tracking, I have clarity. And so I log into clarity about once a day. And today, um, you know, my standard deviation is at 35. Because yes. if you do, and that's just in the past few days, when yeah. I do 90 days, which is way before I started the program, mm -hmm. my standard deviation was 67. 
And if I just Big do difference. like 30 wow. days ago, you know, and as we, as you know, 30 days ago, it's, you know, it's like at 63 and then we go 14 days ago, you know, it's at 56. And then within the past week, it's been at, you know, 35. So it's coming oh, wow. down <laughs> as I start to figure out, um, and I'll have days where it'll fluctuate, but mm -hmm. the trend is coming downward. So mm -hmm. As I identify something as a variable I need to really learn about and pay attention to that's specific to me, then, you know, I'm learn as I'm learning, I go up and down, but at the end of it, once I've figured it out, then I, I've got it covered and I've got the formula and I know what to do. And it just, everything starts to, to line up. So <laughs> it's really exciting. I love that. Yeah. And I mean, I didn't realize that you've your average standard deviation is coming down by, I mean, you've cut it in half. Yeah, <laughs> I have. I've literally like it's that's yeah. incredible. 30 points lower standard deviation. And for anybody who doesn't know, I'll label this one too. Standard deviation is essentially a measurement of how volatile the blood sugars are. So how up and down they're going. Um, that's amazing. 35. My goodness. From 67 too. Okay. So and that's quick. That is a very quick change to go down that much. Most people try to get below 40 in their lifetime and you're getting there in a matter of weeks. So holy cow. Um, I love that. So, and then blood sugars overall, uh, since we've identified barometric pressure, have you had, I hate to say opportunities, but opportunities to test it out? Well, yeah. Like the day that it was, it was, and that was crazy. I actually looked at the weather the day that we had all the hailstorms and everything blowing through. And I thought, oh. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better like test day. <laughs> and I wasn't prepared for how severe the weather got that day. Oh. Um, I mean, the National Weather Service was coming on, you know, all my devices were screaming that, you know, it's <laughs> take shelter. There's torn we had the tornado sirens went off in town. It was severe wow. weather. And it was interesting because I, there's a direct, like the, if you graphed it, the storm's blowing in, the alarms go off, the weather hits and my blood sugar is like steadily coming down. As soon as the weather hits my blood sugar, it's like straight down arrow. Wow. I thought, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> And so by the third storm that blew through, because it was, you know, 24 hours, it, it was about 12 hours of storm after storm. And by the third storm, I had figured out, okay, here comes another one. So I, I didn't take insulin and I made sure I, I changed my, you know, my macro kind of lineup. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I didn't have the arrow going straight down. I, and I, I still went low but it was a gradual low and it came back up very easily. I didn't have to keep stuffing. So, wow. and then by the fourth storm, I didn't really, I had a low technically, but it was like, instead of going into the forties, I hit 56 and, and came up immediately learning and, and direct correlation between severity of the storms, the amount of pressure that drops and how low I go. Yeah. Wow. That is I mean, I love that you're able to compare the visuals as well with the CGM, the pressure, watch the meters of for barometric pressure, uh, but it's still, it, it's just shocking to see that this is impacting this much. And I imagine that my level of, well, here's the crazy part. I already knew this about barometric pressure before you had joined. Like, that's how we identified it, obviously, but it still to me is like, this is it's a real thing. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I, I imagine this is how the endos are going to be over the next five years where they're like protein impacts blood sugars. And we're like, I know it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I love that you're able to shed light on this and that you also share the same um, desire for understanding as I do, where we get to geek out on this and then show other yes. people that this is a thing and they're not crazy yeah. for thinking they're not weather. crazy yeah and, and when that when somebody tells you there's no science behind it mm -hmm. my go-to phrase now is yet there's no yes. science yet because they haven't looked at it but mm -hmm. you just you, when you know that something is going on just keep asking keep pushing keep looking for that answer because it'll it'll turn up absolutely 
Yeah, that's the biggest thing. And even if it, it's not about science, if it's just about expectations, why not be the first one to break expectations? You know, like when I was going through my own medical journey, all my doctors, oh, you're good enough. It's fine. Stop trying so hard. I'm like, well, why not shoot for the stars? You know, why not try to actually have it predictable and stable? They had never seen that before. They're like, it, it doesn't work like that, Matt. That's not how diabetes is. You can't control it. I'm like, turns out you can, you know, yeah. like it's, it's always great to challenge the norm and you know, to push forward. Yeah. So uh, love that you're getting a lot of um, distinction with the, the understanding, the knowledge, the research that you've been able to do. Um, if there was one, whether it's with barometric pressure or some other variable, what would be a golden nugget from what you've learned in our program so far or on your own journey that you would want to share with somebody who's watching or listening? Golden nugget from what I've learned from you? Yeah, something that stood out or really helped you. The one thing overall, and this applies to everything I've learned so far, you have to pay attention and keep track of things so that you actually have empirical data, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go geek on you. You have to have mm -hmm. the evidence yeah. to show the correlations and, and they're specific to you. And once you do those formulas, they work mm -hmm. and you can, you can use them and you don't have to wonder. And I love that because I came on board wanting predictability. That was my goal is I want to predict instead of just feeling like I'm just, you know, floating in the wind and constantly responding after something happens. I want to be mm -hmm. able to control it better. I love that. Well, and I know I'm going to assign one last label because I want to make sure people get it. So you keep talking about formulas. I know most people haven't heard about that. So uh, formulas is what we teach. So if anybody's curious, what's a formula? Um, we teach blood sugar formulas for calculations to predict, to be more stable, to identify things like barometric pressure. <laughs> what's different about each person? Uh, so if anybody's watching wants to learn more about formulas, because it is a little bit different than what you'll hear from your doctor. Uh, way different. Free... Okay, way <laughs> different. Yeah. It is so, yeah. Well, tell yeah. me about that. What makes it different? So doctors give you the one size fits all formula. And, you know, I'm four foot 11. I'm not the same size as you are, Matt. So we, <laughs> we don't have the same formula, yeah. um, you know, going through the exercise routine and, you know, trying to get my, my heart rate up and then listening to other people's like target heart rates. And I thought mm -hmm. I'd die if that was supposed to be my target, we're all right. different. And so that the formula is the formula's you can cater them to yourself and doctors don't do that. They, you know, your blood pressure range is this and every human being on the planet is supposed to fit in that spectrum. Right. And that might, you might not be on that spectrum <laughs> because we're all unique. So that's what I love about it. I love that. Yeah. That's a great description of what it's, it's a unique adaptation to each individual's needs, you know, especially with diabetes specifically. Yeah. Um, so, and obviously as Colleen is doing right now, you can work with us if you need help setting up your blood sugar formulas, but there's actually a free training. If anybody wants to go poke your head in and see what it's all about, uh, you can go to diabetesinaction.com. Uh, so go check that out. It's probably where Colleen found us too. Uh, but yeah, I would love to uh, just wrap this one up with final thoughts. So if there's anything that you think was unsaid that you would love to share or that you wanted to get out uh, with this interview? Probably the only thing we didn't touch on that is very important is it's great to know these formulas. It's great to learn everything. But the reason that I wanted the predictability is because I wanted to start living again. I Ooh. wanted to stop living in what I call the diabetic bubble so that I wouldn't have to worry about those variables affecting me. And I just stopped doing anything that would have a variable in it and I stopped living life, that can be just as devastating as any of the blood sugar issues. You have to balance those things together. And yeah. so knowing how to manage your diabetes better allows me to live and do more things. I was used to be afraid of, I used to be afraid of exercise. And now I'm thinking, now I understand that 
I had, I don't need to be afraid of it because I do it anyway. I just, now I know what to do and how I respond to it. And it makes the world kind of open up. That balance is important. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm actually about to go teach on balance itself within blood sugars and, and how it matches the quality of life. I think you touched on that perfectly. Having certainty and control enables us to be more flexible and free with our lifestyle, you know, and not be locked Absolutely. in with diabetes. I was certainly in the same spot many years ago. I felt like a prison that diabetes had built around me. So proud of you, Colleen, for uh, you. not hiding in the corner when diabetes got hard, but for standing up and fighting to figure it out, for reaching out to us, for doing all this research on barometric pressure, even when people called you crazy, even the doctor's office. It's incredible watching people like you rise up. So I'm proud of you. Uh, and I'm honored to be part of this journey. I know that it's already shown improvements. I mean, your standard deviation coming down 32 points in a couple of weeks. That's amazing. I know it's just going to continue getting better from here on out. So I um, want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to share this piece of knowledge. I know a lot of people think there's a lot to deal with with diabetes and there's you know rumors of the 40 or the 50 variables. Barometric pressure isn't even on those lists yet. There are so many things to consider. There's a reason it sucks and it feels unpredictable. But uh, as you've pointed out, Colleen, there's reasons that blood sugars go up and down. We just haven't identified them yet in many cases. So yeah, anyways, thank you so much uh, for okay. coming on thank today. You for, thank, you for, thank you for taking that step to make this possible. Thank you for being, okay, the geek that you are and, and <laughs> finding those answers because it's made a difference, a huge difference to all of us. It's my absolute pleasure, Colleen. Uh, it's a blast <laughs> watching you guys transform your lives and, and come out of the, the diabetes bubble. So Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I know I'll see you on uh, calls this next week, but uh, thank you for coming out to, to share this piece of knowledge, this geeking out session with me. Uh, everybody watching, thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'm stoked that you're interested in things like barometric pressure, influencing blood sugar control, because that shows that you fit in here as well. You found your people. Uh, and again, that training, you can go check it out, diabetesinaction.com. It'll get you a, a whole new world opened to formulas for blood sugars. Uh, so thanks for hanging out. And... Everybody else, and especially you, Colleen, keep up the fight.